You know, so yeah, I, you know, Habib knows how to win, but he knows how to entertain his own way. Um, he listens to myself and his father, mostly his father, but for the most part, he, he does his own thing. So I was just going to ask you about that fight. He he admitted afterwards that he was watching a lot of Muhammad Ali clips leading up to the Brooklyn fight, and he was getting a little bit in love with his boxing. With all due respect to the other opponents, Connor's a different beast, right? If you start playing around with boxing, you're going to get a left hand that will put down some of the greatest fighters of all time. You can't do that, right? No, you can't. You do that with Connor. He's gonna, he's gonna finish you. He's he's the he's got precision, uh, uh, striking. Uh, he he's an elite striker in the MMA division. Uh, you do that with him. That's the stupidest thing you could ever do. Uh, Habib, look, Habib will go after him. If he misses 99 takedowns, he'll go for 100. You know. Uh, as long as he's standing, he's looking for the takedown. There's no, there's no, there's no game plan here per se. Is how we attack the game plan? Yes, that's that, that's going to be another story in itself. But what our plan is, we can't stand with him. I mean, we're going to lose that one for sure. But uh, keep in mind, Ariel, uh, Habib can hurt him on the stand up too, also. But but in, in route of doing what he needs to do, not not standing with him. He stands with him. We're, we're losing that all day long. We're not winning that one at all. This may seem like a silly question, but I, I just want to ask it anyway, given your 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 expertise. What concerns you more, most about Connor? Uh, the, I mean, he's got great power, great timing, great relaxation. Uh, it's just a timing thing, you know. It concerns me earlier off, you know, getting started right off the bat. He's very going to be very very dangerous uh, right from the get go. So um, we have to be on point, you know. Whoever screws up is going to get uh, the bad end of this one, you know, and. My job is to make sure that Habib's on point, you know, and uh, uh, that's it. You know, we, we just can't screw up because uh, he's too dangerous. He's too dangerous. Now, uh, Eddie Alvarez had talked about fighting out his contract against Poirier. Now, he lost that fight. What's his contract status, and do you guys really want to keep him? I mean, he, again, he's another guy who's never in a boring or shitty fight. Yeah, no, I, I like Eddie Alvarez. I like him personally, and I like him professionally, and... You know, um, you know, he's at an age now where, you know, he, he needs to make some decisions for his family and, and, and for what will probably be the last contract he signs for the rest of his career. Right. So, um, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm in a place if, if Eddie wants to, to go somewhere else and try it, I'm cool with that. But if Eddie wants to stay, uh, I, I, I'd keep him here, too. I told him that. I told him, listen, if you want to finish your career with, with me, I, I, I would like that, and if you want to finish your career somewhere else, I have no problem with that either, man. It's this is when, when guys get to the point where it's the last contract they'll ever sign. I understand. You understand that they're going to do what's best for financially, sure. Uh, I, I, absolutely, because at, at the end of the day, what, what we're looking for here are young guys that want to be world champions, young guys that know they can be a world champion in the UFC or girls that know they can be a, a world champion in the UFC. And if you feel you, that, that you can't be, um, and you feel that, that there's a better decision that you could make at this point in your career for the last contract you'll ever sign, yeah, I, I absolutely understand that. Uh, let me ask you too. After 226, you said uh, Ngano's ego played a part. That was very interesting because he does it seem like he was afraid of getting knocked out, and he admitted he underestimated Stipe. What do you think he needs to do to get his head straight? Because you know this this could be the beginning of a downward spiral for a guy like that, or he could stop the bleeding if he gets his head right. Who's this? Uh, Ngano, Francis. You had said his ego played a yeah, part yeah, in his yeah. losses. Yeah. Um, 
you know, Francis and Ganyu at the time uh, that he was coming up, you know, I believe this guy was going to be the guy, was going to be the heavyweight champion. And uh, he lost his mind. This guy completely lost his mind and uh, started to act, I don't know, in, in a way that you, you, you just don't act. And uh, I, I completely saw it coming. That, that Stipe was, you know, obviously Francis Ngannou was a massive, strong, hard-hitting guy. Anything can happen when he, when he gets in there. But, you know, Stipe... Stipe has this thing where he, I mean, you said it at the beginning of the call, he feels completely disrespected. You know, this guy's always on fire and, 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 and pissed off at the world and pissed off at us. And um, so, I, you know, I, I saw that coming. I knew he was going to be. Francis Ngannou left the, 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 the training center here, you know, where, where he had trained for, for previous fights, took off to France, was in France, you know, training or, or doing whatever he was doing leading up to the Stipe fight because he absolutely positively knew he was going to beat Stipe. Wow. Well, what about the next fight with the Black Beast? I mean, nobody saw that coming. Yeah, well, yeah, nobody saw that that fight would be so bad. Whew. But as you could tell, you know, both guys were gun shy. Yep. Um, you know, the Beast said he had, he, his back was messed up during that fight and whatever, but yeah, I, I don't know. Um, and Gagno has a lot of, I don't know. I, I don't know, man. He's, he's got a lot of things he needs to fix personally and professionally uh, to see if he ever gets back on track again. Just a little update on Brock Lesnar. He's been tested three times in the last month. <laughs> What did, what is the testing? I don't know, but Usada tested him three times in the past month. I mean, that could say Brock Lesnar tested every day since he decided to fight. I, I'm, I told you, I, I'm not buying it. Skeptical. Yep, super skeptical. <laughs> Good for him. What else you got? All right, this is a box. All right, just fight Ryan Garcia. Good luck with that. All right, this one says this is about Daniel Cormier saying if Lesnar for whatever reason doesn't make. The fight, he will give uh, Stipe Miocic a rematch. I think DC only fights one more time. I'm gonna be honest. I think he fights one more time. I don't think we see a, a, a freaking another fight with John Jones, even if John fights soon. Um, I think DC fights uh, Brock Lesnar. I do think that happens, and mm -hmm. then it's out. I don't think we see another Stipe fight. If Brock doesn't show up, yeah, then you get Stipe. But I think we get one more fight out of DC. I think that's smart. I think it's really smart. Yeah. What else you got? All right. This is just a little sound. You already know this, that Connor's not getting punished by the UFC. But I'll let no, you they hear. Used, what I tell you guys, they used the highlight to promote the fight. Of How course they did. I, I mean, they are going to do shit. <laughs> you guys are going to do shit. Yeah. My favorite was when, uh, remember when Las Vegas <laughs> tried fucking with uh, Conor McGregor for throwing the, the Monster Energy drink? Oh, yeah. And they're like, you know what? You're suspended, and we're going to charge you 175000 of this. Ridiculous. And went, Very cool. Now I'm not fighting Vegas anymore. That. All right, let's not get crazy. <laughs> Here's what we'll do. No, no, fine. And then uh, you got to shoot a commercial for us. And Conor went, very cool. Here's the other thing. Uh, the minimum for me to shoot a commercial is about $2 million. So I'll send you the bill, and I'll do it. And then they go, you know what? Let's just call it even, buddy. <laughs> That's how they go. It's yeah. a it's complete joke. And they fired the head of the commission <laughs> after that, too. <laughs> so, commissions, it's, it's a fucking shit fest. What else you got? All right.